My name is Jeremy Walton, and this is my ceiling mounted YouTube setup. Let's go. A lot of people are trying to change things up or hit some new goals for 2022, and having a new setup for YouTube might be one of them. You'll find a ton of videos about this topic, and even though there are key talking points everyone follows, the finished setup can drastically be different from video to video. I'll be covering what I did and the actual cost to do it. The only thing not included in the price is the camera and lights. I've covered that before, that hasn't changed, but taking over this room, getting it ready, and mounting everything to the ceiling is what this video is all about. I'll try and give a few alternatives to what I'm doing if you're not working with a similar space. But try and remember, this is how I want and need my setup to be. What you do is 100% up to you. Take what you need and run with it. I do cover a few small things like my wall art behind me and why you should think about paint color in my video, five ways to film more YouTube videos. So check it out before or after you watch this video. The setup you're looking at now I've had for a while, but if you're new, let me show you what it used to look like. It's similar, but small changes can make a big difference. So let's start with the desk. I'll get to everything else, I promise, but everyone needs a desk and I want to show you how to save some money. This is black walnut. I wanted a darker wood with more black and browns mixed in. My previous Live Edge slab, which is awesome, has a lot of unique colors, but it's now downstairs and is used for my permanent editing setup. A black walnut desk might sound familiar. Plenty of people have them, you've probably seen them on other studio tours. But mine is a bit different. I had a local wood shop make this for me from two inch thick planks. I did all the finishing, I sanded it down to a matte finish, and used some Odie's dark oil to make the color pop. This is roughly three feet by six feet, and I love it because it's a unique piece. That's a huge selling point. So let's look at something you can buy online, like a Foley desk. I have nothing bad to say about the company. They're great, it's a good choice. I just wanna show you your options. Here's their hardwood walnut desk with the same frame I have for my desk and almost the same dimensions, except my desk is thicker. You're looking at $2,133. If you just purchased the frame without the top, you'd be looking at $534. For me, that's a big price jump for adding the walnut top. So you're probably wondering how much I paid for mine. Less. The wood shop charged me $840.63 for the wood, labor, tax, and delivery, and the Jarvis frame with tax and free shipping was $575.39. That's a total of $1,416.02. Not bad for a custom desk, and because it's custom, you can roughly make any size or specific shape within reason you want. If you want powered grommets like Foley offers, go for it and put them wherever you want. If you don't have the room, space, or time to do the finishing yourself, my wood shop charged about $200 extra for that service, still under the original $2,133. Prices do fluctuate, so it's a good idea to get some quotes and shop around to see if a custom desk works in your favor. Okay, enough about my desk, let's talk about this room. It was a guest room, roughly a 10 by 12, with one window off to the side. I wanted to black it all out, so a simple solution is pick up some blackout shades. Depending on the size, they're fairly inexpensive and can be cut to length. For the ceiling, I did something I've never done before, and that's paint the ceiling black. The biggest difference I've noticed compared to a wide ceiling is the ability to control the light, since nothing is bouncing off the walls, and it gives the room a certain vibe, which no one will notice because I'm the only one who comes in here. Another new feature to this setup that was my main focus was mounting everything to the ceiling. I wanted everything off the floor. For this, I went with speed rail. I bought everything from the grip store because they offer black black anodized pipe to stick with the black theme. It'll set you back a few extra bucks and you might be limited on length. Otherwise, if color isn't a worry for you, just go with the aluminum speed rail with a lot more length options. The total cost for the four foot rail and two six foot rails, plus taxes and shipping was $214.72. For what this offers, that's not a bad deal. For all the connections, I went with a local supplier and that's Modern Studio Equipment, located in Van Nuys. And again, I went with all black and mostly junior male and female pins to keep everything a bit beefy with a small bump up in price. The total cost for this was $592.40. This can vary a lot depending on your setup. You have to design what you want to get a more accurate price estimate. The issue you might have is securely mounting the speed rail to studs to carry all that weight. My mount was the junior receiver and nail on plate with mounting holes about five inches apart and with studs 16 inches on center, you can see the problem. This called for heading into the attic. Make sure to wear protective gear and some kind of mask to protect your lungs. I didn't do any of those things and paid for it later. No idea what I was thinking and forgot my camera to film why I was up there in the first place. So let me explain. 
What you'll need is a 2x6 that you'll nail between your studs. Then your junior receiver can be securely screwed to it and not your drywall. If I could do it all over again, you might as well go with a 2x10 so you have more room for air when lining up your plate. Now what do you do if you don't have access to an attic and you still want to keep things off the floor? You're going to have to use the studs in the walls like the pictures behind me. Find the stud, mount your 2x10 over the drywall, and then mount your setup to the 2x10. There are many ways to get the same results. If you have an apartment, you just have to patch some screw holes, which isn't too difficult. I've definitely been there. Having the rail system has given me the ability to mount multiple lights and gives me the option to future-proof as well. Let me give you a little tour of what I have going on. Here is my Aperture 120D with the light dome that I'm using for my key light. I have a grid clamp with the 5 8 inch baby pin with a grip head and 40 inch arm that's kicked out pretty far. I had a compromise on where I mounted the rail because on this side is my Light Mat 1 S2 that I'm using for my fill light. Previously it was on a light stand aimed at a white ceiling for bounce, but now it's aimed off axis away from me and dimmed to my liking. I would have loved to put electrical outlets in my ceiling so even the power cables didn't hang down, but I'm over going up in the attic. That's the lighting setup behind the camera. Let me show you how this plays out before I move on with the tour. First thing is to turn off all the lights. That's a good starting point. Now we'll just turn on just the key light. We have a nice soft light, but you can see how dark my left side and the background is. It needs some work and that's where the fill light comes in. It's more focused on the wall behind me, but spills enough on my face to kill the contrast a bit. No backlight, just two lights and we're done. I know these lights can be expensive. I don't want you to think you need these lights. Build quality, ease of use, even brand loyalty might come into play when deciding what you want. My 120D is at 46%, so you could get away with something less powerful and expensive. I have a 300X, but it doesn't make sense for this setup. I can't tell you what to buy. I can only tell you you don't need the lights, cameras, or audio gear you might see everyone using. For the speed rail, here's the four foot section. There will be a light mounted here for another setup, hopefully soon, and at some point, I even want my camera to be mounted off the ground. It usually sits here on a tripod. That's a work in progress. I do wanna mention audio as well. You can see the Impact Heavy Duty Flex Arm. That's a little over 21 inches long and about $25. It's also mounted to the rail and holds my mic. It's strong, but can easily be adjusted, so it's slightly out of frame. That makes things so much easier, and my XLR cable runs up along the rail over to my camera keeping everything off the ground and out of the way. I love all of this. Sticking with sound, I needed to treat this room because of the echo. I knew it needed it, most rooms do, and if you're in that situation and don't have the money, you can make a big difference by adding furniture, blankets, rugs, anything to knock down the echo. I've done all of that with good results. For this room though, I wanted to spend a little money, keep it clean, organized, and make a space I felt good shooting in, which does make a difference. To my left is a producer's choice acoustic blanket from Vocal Booth to Go. It's all black of course, 80 inches by 80 inches, and has grommets. They come highly recommended and are designed to be sound blankets. I hung it with hooks to decrease the reflective surfaces in the room and use it as a negative fill in front of my white closet doors. All in for two blankets, because I know at some point I'll need another, was $138.89. For the ceiling, I went with Acoustamac panels, which I really like and appreciate the quality. They're four feet by two foot panels and are two inches thick. Again, all black in color with a mineral wool core and mounting hardware. I priced out doing something similar myself, but when you add up all the materials and time, it just made more sense to place an order and get them delivered. Sometimes doing things yourself isn't worth the cost. All you need to do is some careful measuring and mount the T-slots to the ceiling and the back of the panels. Then it's just a matter of lining everything up and sliding them into place. What a difference this makes. I have four on the ceiling and two on the walls. To purchase six panels, all in was $533.57. You can also get different colors, patterns, and materials to fit whatever style you want. If you can swing it, the look and performance is top notch. What else, what else? I think that's it. Let's do a recap of what I covered and price. We talked about the desk, the speed rail, all the accessories and mounting options, sound treating the room, and let's add about 100 bucks for paint, hardware, and miscellaneous items for a grand total of $3,020.60. You can definitely do this for a lot less, or even more money if you want. I just wanted to show you what I'm working with and how much it cost me. If you're thinking about setting up a workspace of your own, I suggest watching a bunch of videos to get new ideas that'll work for you. I've been loving this setup that might look very similar, but with these changes, it's made a huge difference filming YouTube videos. I come in, hit record, and get to work. 
Well, there you have it. My YouTube setup mounted to my ceiling. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button because there's definitely more in the way. Subscribe so you don't miss out. Leave a comment below with your thoughts on this setup. Until next time, it's a wrap.